Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new wine video. I'm your host, Julien Michel, and today I'm giving you the five main facts that every wine connoisseur should really have heard about when it comes to Chardonnay wine. I'm sure you've all had some Chardonnay wine at some point, but do you really know what you're tasting and why it is so special? You would remember that a few weeks ago we discussed the main characteristics and facts about Cabernet Sauvignon, the most famous of all red wines. Well, today we're going on the white wine side with the most popular, the most adored and sometimes the most controversial style of white wines. We'll talk about its origin, its flavors and you'll see that it is even more popular than you already think it is. These are the top five facts that you should know about Chardonnay. Let's go! My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated costs. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. Before being a wine, a type of wine, well, Chardonnay is the name of a grape the wines are made from. The Chardonnay grapes originates from France, from here, but more precisely the Burgundy area. It was there in Burgundy in immemorial times, a long time ago, that Chardonnay was named after simply a village in Bourgogne that's called Chardonnay, and that the Romans used to call Cardonacum, which translates into the area of thistles. Chardon, the word Chardon that forms the first part of Chardonnay being French for thistle as well. We guess because there was a lot of thistles there in that area. The historic legend in France goes that Chardonnay owes its popularity to the wife of Emperor Charlemagne, one of the biggest, greatest Charlemagne in French history, who ordered that white wine scrapes be planted in Burgundy because she was fed up with the red wine staining her husband's bed while he was drinking. From its humble debuts in this small anonymous town of France, the grape allowed to make wines that tasted so good that over the centuries it has become the number one white wine grape variety in the whole world, being planted virtually all around the globe. Everyone knows about Chardonnay, even the ones that know a tiny bit, just a tiny bit about wine, know about Chardonnay. It is a true success story. Also, every wine producing nation makes a rather large amount of Chardonnay, every single one of them. But let's see which countries are the most significant Chardonnay makers. The top three Chardonnay producing countries are France as number one as expected, but it is very closely followed by the United States, which have virtually just as much Chardonnay planted around the United States than France. Then comes Australia and the Aussies also love the Chardonnays, but Chardonnay is planted virtually, as I was saying, in every wine producing nation. To illustrate this, the top 10 Chardonnay making nations also include by descending order of vineyard surface area, well, Italy, Chile, South Africa, Spain, Argentina, Moldova, and even New Zealand, all around the world. 
Two surprising facts about Chardonnay illustrating its popularity. Number one, when we think Burgundy, well, we often think about red Pinot Noir wines, right? Perhaps because Burgundy is also the name of a color, the wine shade of red. But in fact, Chardonnay represents about 60%, so more than half, of Burgundy's wine output, compared to only 30% of Pinot Noir. It is a little bit surprising. Surprising fact number two, in the early 1940s, well, there were fewer than 100 acres of Chardonnay grapes grown in California, now there are more than 100,000 acres. But now that we've seen where Chardonnay is grown, let's have a look at where the very best ones are made. There is quite a lot to say here. Of course, being the most planted white wine grape variety around the world, well, there is a lot of cheap, tasteless or ordinary Chardonnays out there, often down the shelves of every supermarket all around the globe. But don't forget that Chardonnay also makes some of the very most expensive wines in the world, the most refined wines, and certainly the most refined white wines in the world. Let's say that the five Top five most expensive Chardonnays range between $4,000 a bottle to over $11,000 a flask. The very, very best Chardonnays are made in its region of origin simply because the grape was designed centuries ago to be perfectly suited to the local terroir, the cool climate of Burgundy, the limestone soils that give so much finesse to the wine, and also because the locals well have perfected its expression and the winemaking around Chardonnay to now nearing perfection. There are four, four main names for fine Chardonnays in Burgundy that you should know about or have in mind. Those are Chablis, and this is a Chablis. There is Merceau, Montrachet, with two neighboring villages that are super famous, that are Puligny Montrachet and Chassagne Montrachet, and then the Hill of Corton, yielding some of the very best Chardonnays in the world. Within those, look for the mentions Premier Cru and Grand Cru on labels. Grand Cru being above Premier Cru, but both indicate special vineyards, sites that deliver extremely fine whites. Now, of course, since the judgment of Paris in 1976, we know that California makes just as good Chardonnay wines as Burgundy, if not better. The judgment of Paris was a tasting organized here in France, obviously in Paris in the 1970s by a British journalist called Stephen Spurrier, where the jury tasted French wines versus California wines at a blind tasting, meaning they didn't know, they couldn't see the bottles, they couldn't see the labels, they didn't know what they were tasting. So this historic event that changed the wine landscape forever, most remember mainly the results of the confrontation between the Napa Valley Reds against the Bordeaux, the great Bordeaux chateaus, and the Napa Valley came out on top. But the judgment of Paris tasting also included white wines made from Chardonnay in France versus California Chardonnays. There were six California Chardonnay contenders and four white burgundies in that blind tasting lineup. Famously, the best Chardonnay in the roaster turned out to be 1973 Chateau Montelena Chardonnay from Napa Valley, obviously. A wine that was made famous by the Hollywood movie Bottle Shock. In the US, one of the most expensive Chardonnays, to give you a point of reference, is Marcassin Estates Chardonnay, which retails around $400. Now, it's less known, but Chardonnay is broadly used to make sparkling wines too, including some of the finest sparkling wines in the world. Take Krug's Clos du Menhir, famous, famous brand, famous brand of champagne. This is a rare single vineyard champagne, one of the most expensive champagnes, in fact, that retails around $1,200. It is made from 100% Chardonnay grapes. Chardonnay is a major component in the white bubblies of champagne, which generally often 
include a blend of Chardonnay with two red Pinot grapes. Chardonnay is also commonly used in many sparkling wines around the world, just like this one. This is more of a Loire Cremant wine and I'm in the Loire and that's why I'm enjoying this wine. So many sparkling wines around the world are made from Chardonnay in the, you know, from the sparklings of California, like from the Carneros in the south of the Napa Valley or the Anderson Valley, for example, that's in California, but it's also used for making English sparkling wines, many Cremants in France, just like this one, Cremant from the Loire, but also from Alsace. You'll find Francia Corta in Italy or even Caba in Spain. Virtually only Prosecco, the Italian Prosecco, uh, a sparkling wine never uses Chardonnay as far as sparkling wines are concerned. Every other style of sparkling wine pretty much is guaranteed to contain some amount of Chardonnay. There are two faces to Chardonnay wine really. Two very distinct faces. There is oak Chardonnay and un oak Chardonnay. The difference is in how the wine is made. Using oak barrels for its fermentation and maturation at the winery or not. Chardonnay in itself is a relatively neutral grape, meaning that it doesn't have hugely powerful aromas or flavors as a grape. So an oak Chardonnay features subtle and very delicate notes of blossoms. It can be very floral. There is often touches of lemon and sometimes in warmer, sunnier areas, like in warm areas of California, where the grapes are riper and get really rich, it features notes of tropical fruits such as pineapple and mango. Then because the grape doesn't have powerful flavors to start with while the wine will take on a lot of flavors from the oak if it is put in contact with toasted oak, toasted barrels at any stage of the winemaking process. Oak Chardonnays have strong notes of toasted toasted hazelnut, lots of torrefaction, caramel, butter, and often brioche, very common descriptor for Chardonnay wine. All of those come on top of the floral and fruity elements, and sometimes it overpowers the delicate expression of the Chardonnay grapes. You may have heard about the ABC movement, which stands for anything but Chardonnay. And this refers to many wine lovers having come to hate on heavily oaked Chardonnay wines, which were once very, very fashionable and everywhere in the US in particular. Now, the best Chardonnays are the ones that find the perfect balance between letting the grape flavors shine through the wine, but adding elegant notes of oak to add depth and texture. And I'll finish this video by giving you my top tips if after watching this video you want to learn more and explore the global wonders of Chardonnay wine. First I would say look out for some decent un -oak Chardonnay wines. Those can be quite affordable and really easy to find at any shop really. You just ask for an un -oak Chardonnay, an affordable one, it'll do the trick. They will give you a reference point on what Chardonnay tastes like without any oak, just the grapes. So you will have a sense and get a sense of what a grapes taste like. Then move on to mildly oaked ones from cool climates. So those are the Chablis in France in particular, in a style that is crisp and precise and generally very mildly oaked. So you get the pure expression of the fine French limestone terroir with just a tiny bit of oak. In the US, look out for cool climate ones like in, the, in Oregon, Sonoma Coast, Carneros or Santa Barbara County. And finally, if you can afford it, well, climb up the quality and price ladder with Premier Cruz and Grand Cruz from Burgundy, from Meursault, from Puligny, or for Chassagne, Montrachet, and perhaps compare those with high-end Napa Valley Chardonnays to see which style you favor and which, which style you prefer. There's the ones that love California and the ones that love France for some reason. Then if you enjoy the journey, well, feel free to try Chardonnays from all different countries, Australia, New Zealand, and the likes. Although the styles and expression you will find won't be all that fundamentally different. Oh, and don't forget to try those 100% Chardonnay Blanc de Blanc sparkling wines, whether that's from California, and you'll find great examples there, or from Champagne. And I'll leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Since your Italian wine shipment is on its way, well, next week we will be talking about Italian wines and a few things that you should really know about 
Italian wine in general. We'll talk about you know different areas and the most famous wines in Italy and where your shipment stands in there. I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers! Santé! Salut!